Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 226, Sweet 16. It had been a few months since the Great Railway Show had ended on the mainland, and Sir Topham Hatt's railway was just about back to normal. The trees were returning to Gordon's Hill, the last international engines were saying farewell. It was a time of change. Recently, the Sodor Sweet Shop had expanded with the addition of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory, and Sir Topham Hatt needed an engine to take charge of the new responsibilities. How about you, Wilbert? You're a hard worker. I could really use a saddle tank engine like yourself to keep up with the demand. What say you trade the conifers for some candy? Wilbert chuckled. As honored as I am, sir, I would prefer to stay in the forest. The only sticky stuff I need in my life is tree sap, thank you very much. But I do know of another saddle tank engine that is looking for work. Why, that's perfect! I trust your judgment, Wilbert, so give me all of the details and I'll have him here in a jiffy. All right, if you say so. A few days later, a new engine had arrived from the mainland. Welcome to the island of Sodor. I am Sir Topham Hatt, the controller of the Northwestern Railway. And what might your name be? Sixteen, grumbled the engine. Oh, come on. We're a lot more informal here on Sodor. You needn't impress us with that number as a name thing. Come along, what's your real name? The engine looked at Wilbert. It's 16, sir, he whispered. His real name is 16. Oh, you're serious? Well, I do apologize. Uh, welcome to the railway, 16. Now I have a very special job for you. Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory is one of our newest additions, and I need an engine to run the area and keep it in tip-top shape. Sound like a plan? I like working around metal, he grunted. Uh, beg pardon, gasped Sir Topham Hatt. I said I like working around metal, steel, sparks, fire, lava. Oh, uh, very interesting. But you see, I don't need you to work in a smelter's yard. I need you to work at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Can you do that? I guess, grumbled Sixteen. Very well, then. I will see to it that... Uh, oh, he's puffing away. All right, then. The engines looked at Wilbert. Well, I didn't say he was my friend. He's a saddle tank engine, just like Sir Topham Hatt requested. And I certainly didn't say he was a hard worker. And Wilbert was right. Sixteen was different, to say the least. He was grumpy and disinterested and really didn't like performing certain tasks. So you're the new chocolate factory engine, asked the dairy manager. Hmm, you'll do, I suppose, as long as you don't mind getting sticky and dirty. But Sixteen did mind. The chocolate melted in the hot sun. Barrels of milk spilled onto the track. It was a messy job, and before long, he'd soon had enough of it. I won't do it, he grumbled. Go find yourself another engine and he puffed away, leaving a trainload of chocolate and a very unhappy dairy manager behind. What a waste of time, said Sixteen to himself. As soon as I find that rolling bridge, I am out of here. Just then, he came upon the Sodor ironworks. Sixteen gazed at the tall machinery. He heard the crunching of metal. He smelled the flames in the furnace. It was beautiful. Ho, ho, now this, this is a steelworks, he chuckled. I'm right at home. Say goodbye to Mr. Lolly's Chocolate Factory, or whatever his name was. I could work here forever. You better keep on moving, said Airy. The ironworks isn't for steam engines. At least, not in your current state. What are you talking about? I'd be a great fit here. Look, I've worked with steel my entire life. You've got a great setup here, but if there's one thing I'd recommend... Keep your thoughts to yourself and your wheels moving, grunted Bert. We don't need your help. The steamies that enter here, they never leave. 
Ah, a forever job. I like your thinking. When do I start? Get out! Sixteen hightailed it out of the ironworks and didn't stop until he found a shed where he could catch his breath. News had spread about his first day on Sodor, and Sir Topham Hatt was not impressed. Sixteen, I brought you here to work at Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Now if you cannot do that one simple task, I will send you away. Do you understand? Sixteen groaned. He didn't like the job, but he didn't have a choice. The next morning, the dairy manager was waiting for him. You have a lot of time to make up, Sixteen. First, you need to get rid of that spoiled milk you left sitting in the sun yesterday. Then you will deliver these boxcars to the docks. And those trucks are in the wrong siding. Furthermore, and the list grew longer and longer. Finally, Sixteen had reached his limit. Fine, yes sir, he said at last, and he coupled up to the milk tankers. I want that spoiled milk dumped somewhere far away so I don't have to smell it. I don't care where you do it, just get it out of this yard. Sixteen smiled. He had the perfect place in mind. If those diesels can't handle the heat, they better get out of the ironworks. Here's a little parting gift, courtesy of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Cry over this, will ya? And Sixteen dumped the tankers in a siding. They split open and the foul liquid began to mix with the heat of the foundry. In a few minutes, the stench is gonna be unbearable, he chuckled. Let's add some chocolate to our dessert of the day, shall we? Sixteen ran back to the chocolate factory and puffed in with the boxcars just in time. The ironworks was reeking of boiling dairy. Ari and Bert had been sleeping and they didn't know what was going on, but they couldn't stand the smell any longer. Who put those leaky tankers over there? shouted Bert. You again? Move your train and get out of here before we turn you into tank engine stew. Cry me a chocolate river, laughed Sixteen, and he puffed away, leaving the boxcars sitting on the points. Sixteen thought he was being clever, but he was obviously causing incredible amounts of confusion and delay. Ari and Bert eventually freed themselves from the siding, but they smelled so horrible that Sir Topham had ordered them to the washdown at once. The milk had been lost, the boxcars were destroyed, and Sixteen was at the center of it all. I've seen a lot of engines on my railway over the years, said Sir Topham Hatt, but you are without a doubt one of the worst engines to ever come to Sodor. You've sabotaged the ironworks and lost resources on behalf of Mr. Jolly's Chocolate Factory. Do you think any good was going to come of this? Sixteen shrugged. He didn't know and he didn't care. For what it's worth, sir, Ari and Bert really did need a washdown, quipped Henry. Sir Topham Hatt rolled his eyes. I'm sending you away, Sixteen. You are clearly not a good fit for Sodor, but I do know of a steelworks on the mainland that is willing to give you another chance. Merlin here will escort you when you're ready. Sixteen didn't need any coaxing. He puffed away without a word to anyone. Well, that didn't go over well, whispered Wilbert. I thought you knew that engine, laughed Henry. What made you recommend him to Sir Topham Hatt? I never said he was a good engine. He's a saddle tank, right, sir? I, I suppose I might have jumped at Wilbert's suggestion a bit too quickly. But still, that engine was nothing but trouble. I bet he has a history of not following the rules. Speaking of which, I have an excellent story about how Sixteen went cab over wheels, if you're interested. But Sir Topham Hatt shook his head. Another day, another time, Wilbert. Let's all be thankful that Sweet Sixteen left when he did. Who knows what chaos and calamity awaited us if we hadn't shown him the door. And the engines puffed away leaving Sir Topham Hatt to find a new engine to work at the chocolate factory.